Today it's September morning, late September, and I'm sitting on my favorite place, which is about one kilometer from where I live. Uh, I come here very often to think, to sit on this very place and just think about different ideas and usually start my day by coming here and then uh, go for a walk to the forest, spend a lot of time there and it's, it's really great to have this kind of environment close to close to your own home because you can go anytime you want especially me because of the way I've set up my life and that enables me to pretty much dictate my own schedule so yeah I, I spend a lot of time in nature it's very important for me and um, that's also the reason why we are filming this on this very place. I do get inspiration to to music from nature a lot. In fact, I don't think I would be able to write music if I would not have connection to nature. That is, for me at least, a necessity to have this. And whenever I go for composing process, I spend even more time in the nature to connect with it. And Composing is more to me about listening than actually composing. I listen to the notes that are playing in my head or wherever and wherever they come from. And from that comes a particular song or a theme. And I think that nature has a lot to do with this because when you connect to the nature it gives you something, but you cannot connect to the nature, in my opinion, in a way that you force it. You really have to respect it. And if you respect it, it will give you a lot of things for your life. At least in my case, this has been always. All these birds going here and the wonderful scenery, it's just so much inspiring to me that when I go to my studio or wherever I'm composing, the songs just come. For me, composing is very easy. Maybe, maybe because of the connection to the nature. There are three words that mean a lot to me. Those are love, work and knowledge. And in this particular order. And I think these are the ones that govern our life. And if love governs your life, if your work governs your life and knowledge, whatever you mean with love, work and knowledge, I don't think you can go wrong. But what I've learned is not to try to save the world anymore because I tried, I had tried in my arrogance to save the world. I wrote so many songs about mankind and society and how people should live and it took me 20 years myself to get into the place where I'm now, where I am not preaching anymore. I, don't, I have no need to tell people how to live their lives. I was diagnosed in 2004 when I went through a nervous breakdown which was a gradual development going to therapy, psychotherapy for about eight years and where my neurotic structure actually broke down which means what they call nervous breakdown and I was hospitalized and from that moment my recovery started and it has lasted over 10 years and I, I have dealt with everything in my life what has happened to me 
my father's suicide, all the things. And I always say that, would you feel empathy towards somebody who is in a wheelchair compared to somebody who has bipolar disorder? You don't feel empathy to a person that looks normal, but you feel empathy to a person who is in a wheelchair. So my illness has been very tough for my loved ones. And it is not, there's nothing I can do for that except to try to take care of myself in the best possible way, which I am doing. I have to live with this illness for the rest of my life. So being reclusive means that I have three people in my life that keep me here. One is my wife. We've been together for 13 years and she is really uh, a person who has done so much for me and kept me here with her positive attitude and understanding everything I've done and all the stupidities I've done and understanding it's not an easy thing to be together with an artist it's uh, it's very difficult so to, to to find something like that which is obviously your soulmate is, is important and if you are blessed to find that then you're lucky I did, I was and, and I certainly don't take it for granted anymore I did before um, second person is my daughter who is a very special person we have very close connection and we we call each other's daily and I visit her and we have coffee and talk about things and she is singing taking lessons and she is one of those people that also bring me a, a tremendous joy and it's like a friend you know it's very strange but I consider her as my friend. A third person is my mother who is for me a true hero because what she has gone through in her life when my father killed himself I really don't understand how she survived with two small kids, me and my brother and how she managed those years but she did and she's a living proof that you can actually do that. You can survive almost anything. Avalon is a vehicle for me with which I can express myself with almost anyone, any musician I like who is available in any setting and I can tell stories in music and I see this form also evolving. One of my biggest dreams is to write a musical. So maybe this is this is uh, something in in between when I'm going to write musicals in the future. I don't know. But I know for sure that I love to do this and after this video blog we're gonna demonstrate and document the entire making of the whole Avalon 2 album so you are able to follow the entire process of, of making this album from composing for the very last stage and we are talking about six months so I hope you will enjoy this because we put a lot of work into this and we care and I think it's going to be an interesting journey for me and for the musicians and, and also for you. So that is what Avalon means to me. It's my future.